Hello and welcome back to uh, Trilby's Notes. Yes. I'm Bobo Puck. And I'm Blaster Master. And uh, we start where we left off in the last episode. Mm. With a piercing through the head. Yeah, it was it was not nice. <laughs> uh, so I checked out the solution, but I haven't told my friend about it. Uh, but I have to... I don't need anything. You don't need anything. Uh, so, in fact, the solution is incredibly logical. Hmm. Incredibly logical. So I can't get up, can I? No. I can give you a hint. You have to wait until he's kneeling. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now. No. Now. Now. Yeah. Um. Boy. Let's kick him. Let's kick him. There we go. There we are. Oh wow. You kicked her. <laughs> Rape time. <laughs> Siobhan was out cold, but uninjured. She would probably be safe on her bed while I continued my investigation. Mm. Oh, yeah. Good, good idea. How did you knock her unconscious? Did she fall on her head? Maybe I kicked her in the head. <laughs> Uh -huh. that's not, I, I don't think that was the intention of writing that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to take off her clothes. I don't have enough room for her pockets. Uh, what's this, a desk? So in, Such an innocent guy. Yeah. And a discard backpack, eh? Take back. Pack. Open. Back. Pack. Yeah. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. There was a few textbooks, a half empty water bottle, and a large folder marked O'Malley Family History. Oh. This, I decided, was my quarry. Yep. Lucky. I flipped through the pages, but she said it was in her backpack. Oh, right. I flipped through the pages until I reached the information relevant to the 18th century and I read my discoveries out loud. The Why? The Liverpool-based O'Malley Shipping Company ran for three generations of the family in the mid to late 18th century until the loss of one of the clippers drove the company to bankruptcy. Hmm. The owner at the time, Jacob O'Malley, hey, it's you. No, you're Bobo Puck. You placed the blame somewhat irrationally on shipping crate with family legend alleged to be haunted. And that had been on the ship all the time. There are numerous tales of bizarre events surrounding the crate, and the story of the crate's origin is no less mysterious. It goes that a strange young man came to a carpenter's at the Liverpool dockyards, and the very expensive looking harpsichord, which he insisted be smashed up, and the wood used for whatever purpose the carpenter desired. Huh. Oh. What? He refused to leave the instruments. Until it's utterly broken, its component parts in front of his eyes would send to mate into crates. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, okay, wait. Uh, when pressed for his name, the man identified himself as Jack Freehorn. Oh! Okay, what? Who's I don't understand. Jeffrey? So, what, what was, July 28, what was the deal? What was the deal with the harpsichord? I didn't get it. The harpsichord was cursed. Uh, did they say the harpsichord was cursed? No, quite clearly it was. Oh, okay, I didn't register it. Okay, yeah. So, what trifle have you been wasting your father's money on now, Jack? What does it look like? It looks like a virginal. A harpsichord, actually. In the Flemish style. Quite old, quite expensive. Well, I suppose I should be grateful that something is distracting you from the occult for once. I fear you may be speaking too soon, my friend. Oh, God. I should have known. You and your silly obsessions. <laughs> so what delivery inhabits this magnificent instrument? The instrument as a whole is for the most part untainted, untainted by the ethereal realm, but its keys are what spark my interest. Usual, unusually, they have been carved from centuries-old English oak. And that's the interesting part? I will not be disheartened by that sharp tongue of yours. The wood has gone through many incarnations before being incorporated into this device. Items of furniture, building material. In fact, just over 200 years ago, 
it was part of a wall. A wall of a certain inn on a well-travelled road in Wales. The unicorn? I'm so pleased you remember. I could hardly forget it. The way you have been obsessing quite heartily over the over its of light. Your correspondence persists in filling your head with rubbish about ghosts and demons. I count myself very lucky to have tracked down every, even a small piece of that hostelry. Uh, I know I've already told you some of the wonderful stories attached to it. But uh, this instrument has had its fair share of mysterious happenings. The usual batch of strange noises, sudden madness, unexplicable deaths. Why doesn't it have any black keys, by the way? Seasons, my <laughs> friend. This curiosity of you for all things ungodly is no doubt already befound something. You're a fine fellow, Wilbur, but you have not a drop of romance in your body. Now stop browbeating me from my inquiring mind and let us take dinner. Uh, you were saying? It, it didn't have any black keys, that oh. harpsichord. Do harpsichord have black keys? Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah, they totally have. And now we have harpsichord music. Awesome. Nice touch. That night, Jack was stirred from his bed by the sound of music emanating from his new instrument. Oh dear. His first thought was anger, mostly because the harpsichord was an antique, never intended to be played. Oh no. But then he listened to the haunting melancholy tune. Melancholy tune and felt his stomach roll inexplicably with fear. Oh no. Wilbur, is that you? Oh dear, no, no this is bad, this is bad. So we're just getting one murder off Okay, so, so, uh, so, the thing about it, the... He, he, he mentioned that the hopsicle was cursed. Yeah, he, he didn't actually say explicitly that the hopsicle was cursed, but he said he should be chopped up into little pieces. Yeah, that's what they said. Uh, but they never said why. Just that it should be chopped up. Yeah, but why would you want it chopped up? It's an antique. <laughs> I don't know. There must be there must be something to it. So that wood is what's is what's cur is what the curse lies in. Can we take the pistol? Of course. We weren't close enough. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. Perspective, you know. Hmm. Good idea. Good idea. Take everything. Uh, I think it's one of these. Uh, go go uh. go down right up. I think. Oh, yeah. Gone downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, he's holding a candle. That's funny. Yeah. Okay. On <laughs> Herb's No, oh, come on! <laughs> oh, no, here's the pistol on the Herb's Curry! <laughs> Harps. <laughs> A. Chord. Player. I didn't understand the word player. Okay. You, you, you can just write shoot man. Shoot man. Shoot Be man. more specific. Shoot man. But I kind of want to see what happens if we die. You okay with that? Okay. Gotta get all the death scenes. Jack could not type a step further because he realized with a lurch that he recognized the dark figure that sat at the keys. He had read of this strange entity that recurred frequently in stories surrounding the Unicorn Inn and the subjects that were later constructed from his school. The objects. Ah, sorry. And he knew with absolute certainty that the tall man would destroy him were not destroyed first. Okay, so hey, we actually got some story. You won't take me, Damon. Oh, see that I told you, he did kill his wife in the hotel. Wilbur? No, oh God, no! But I, I could have sworn you. I know you. You. Oh God. Please forgive me, Your Majesty, for my transgressions. I'm a worthless craven fool, worth a second of your precious time. I beg you, spare me. I will redeem myself for my offense. I will be yours forever, my body, mind, soul. Hmm. What was the name of this fellow? 
Thank you, my lord. Thank you. Jack Freehorn. This may have been the same Jack Freehorn who went on to make a bizarre religious cult. Hmm. A depraved group of platonists worshippers. Oh, it's your voice. Sorry, ah, sorry. Who were spoken of much of with, uh, with my latest flashback, my knowledge of the history of the cursed wood gained another step. Before the crate, it had been a harpsichord. And some time before the harpsichord, it had been part of some kind of hostelry in Wales. But it seems... An uh, inn called the Unicorn. Why did that ring a bell somewhere in my recent memory? Mm. It had definitely seen something in the Clan Bronwyn Hotel that was linked to the place. But where? Oh, what? She's gone? Yeah, I think we're gonna kill her. <sighs> no... Uh, maybe we should end this episode here. We've got a lot of exposition and stuff. Oh, crap, yeah. Uh, thanks everyone for watching. Oh, there's another note. Hey! Neat. I think we've been missing notes, by the way. Uh, it said note four on that one. The last one we read. <laughs> Shut <up. laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.